Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, we're going to cover rest of your talent choices, when to use those talents, as the right traits, and gearing so you can keep your team topped with the right talent choices. Before we get into this video, it's important to note that this information has been gathered from the beta and talent choices or gearing might change with the release of B of A. Rest of Druids have one standard build which gives the best healing output for PvP. The standard build looks like this, but some talents can be swapped depending on which comp you face. This standard build provides the most healing output by having extra heal over time effects which increases your healing because of our mastery. Scenarian Ward is the best pick in this tier because the heal is affected by our mastery. It also provides you with a strong healing cooldown on a short CD which can also be used to keep your target on high health when you're about to get into a CC chain. For example, you can use Scenarian Ward on a target before getting trapped by a hunter. This way the target will stay high on health and you can sit the CC chain. Prosperity could be used as an alternative option combined with the Soul of the Forest talent. However, these talent picks will slightly reduce your healing output, making them worse than Scenarian Ward. Another reason Prosperity combined with Soul of the Forest is weaker is because it won't allow you to play Incarnation if needed. Wild Charge is the best pick in this tier because of its short cooldown and the mobility it offers. Wild Charge can be used to leap to an ally when you're not shapeshifted, to charge someone as bear and root them in place for 4 seconds, or in cat form to leap behind an enemy target and daze them for 3 seconds, or to leap forward 20 yards in travel form to escape from the enemy team. Tiger Dash could be used versus Hunter teams to avoid traps, but its 45 second cooldown and short speed increase makes it worse talent pick over Wild Charge. Renewal could be used instead when you're gonna play at the pillar with your team for the majority of the match. For example when you're playing a comp like LSD or Thunder. You will be at the pillar the entire game, which makes Renewal a good pick. The best pick in this tier is Guardian Affinity. It gives you a 6% passive damage reduction, iron fur and frenzied regeneration to be a lot more tanky during swaps or when you're being trained. Balance affinity could be used when facing a double caster matchup with a mage to avoid getting polymorphed easily. It should only be picked if you know you can get away with it which means you are 100% sure you won't get trained down or swapped to. Feral affinity is really strong in 2s because of the extra damage it provides with rake, rip and swipe which makes it a good pick to help your partner secure a kill. The best pick in this tier is Mighty Bash, simply because you already have a root and a knockback is only good on certain maps. Bash can be used when playing in comps that don't have a lot of stuns available, for example when playing with a spell cleave. Typhoon can be useful on maps like Blades Edge Arena to knock people off the bridge, or to simply knock enemies away from you. This talent is situational, but could be used if you're playing a comp that already has a lot of stuns available, for example when playing with a Rogue or a Windwalker. If your team does not need another stun or knock, Mass Entanglement is a good pick to instantly root multiple targets. The best pick in this tier is Cultivation because it gives you an extra hot when the target drops below 60% which also works towards your mastery to increase the healing the target takes. Incarnation can be used versus rogue mage comps to avoid getting polymorphed since Incarnation makes you immune to polymorph for the duration. Incarnation can also be used to counter cooldowns with the same CD, for example Incarnation from a Feral Druid. Incarnation also works really well versus Purge Spam comps who go all in to score kill quick, for example Resto Shaman Windwalker DK. Soul of the Forest works well combined with Prosperity and gives you some extra burst healing. However, Cultivation's healing output is more than Soul of the Forest, which is why Cultivation remains a better pick. The best pick in this tier is Stonebark. It makes your Ironbark 15 second reduced cooldown and makes your hot stick for 20% more on the target with Ironbark active and should always be picked for PvP. In a PvE environment, like raiding, Spring Blossoms is a good alternative pick, but for PvP you should always pick Stonebark.
The best pick in this tier is Germination and should always be used in any PvP environment. Every hot increases the healing the target takes because of how Restitute Mastery works. Having two rejuvenations active instead of one will make other hots stick for a lot more. In the PvE environment, Flourish could be a viable option depending on preference. Germination can help you keep your target high on health with multiple hots to avoid having to play catch up for the rest of the match. In BFA, you can now pick three on the talents and choose between playing Trinket, Adaptation or Relentless. Trinket should almost always be played as a rested rid in a 3 vs 3 situation. Adaptation could be useful in 2s, depending on what you face, since you can easily get punished for playing Adaptation. Adaptation works well versus teams that have to kill you in a stun, for example any comp with a DK. Relentless could be used when facing a comp with a lot of CC, for example Jungle or PHP. You should only play Relentless if you're playing a tanky comp which can survive through a lot of damage with either CDs or off healing, for example Thundercleave. There's one PvP talent which should always be picked, which is Focused Growth. Focused Growth reduces the mana cost of Life Bloom by 60% and increases its healing by 50%, which stacks up to 3 times. Keeping up 3 stacks of Focused Growth will boost your healing by a lot and will make it easier to keep your target high on health. There's also some PvP talents that are situational and your pick will depend on what you face. Cyclone is a good standard pick to help your team finish a game whenever you get a chance to cast a Cyclone. Cyclone can be used to start a CC chain, follow up a CC chain or to cross a CD enemy team while your team bursts down a target. The Vitalize should be used against melee cleaves since it will add 3 seconds to rejuvenation and heal the target whenever they take a melee critical strike. Overgrowth should be used against spell cleaves when Revitalize is not picked. It's also a good pick versus teams that spam purge hots and a melee caster comp with a lot of CC, for example mage with a warrior. Overgrowth instantly applies life bloom, rejuvenation, wild growth and regrowth to the target on a 45 second cooldown. And last are some optional talents that can be picked based on preference or depending on what type of setup you face. Early Spring is a good pick versus casters to make your Wild Growth instant cast to avoid getting interrupted when your team is under a lot of pressure. Thorns can be used against melee cleaves to help your team with damage since it will deal 5% of their health in nature damage on every melee attack. Besides doing damage, it also slows the person struck by Thorns for 50% for 4 seconds. So to recap, the standard build will be Focused Growth with Cyclone and Revitalize against melee cleaves. Cyclone can be swapped out for Thorns in its build if you know you won't be casting any Cyclones throughout the match, for example when you get trained. The standard build against Spell Cleaves is Focused Growth with Cyclone and Overgrowth. Cyclone can be swapped out for Early Spring in this build if you know you won't be able to cast any Cyclones because of interrupts or CC from the enemy team. Rested Druids have a couple of strong Azerite traits that can be used depending on the situation. The first trait is Urstock's Endurance, which will be really strong when you're the target for the majority of the game. Next is Growth Tending, which makes Swiftman put a hot on the target when used. Whenever Swiftman is cast, the target Swiftman is cast on will receive a 9 second hot. This hot is affected by your mastery as well and the trait can be stacked. This trait is best used when you don't expect to get trained to increase your healing. The last trait is Waking Dream which makes your passive ability Isera's Gift tick every 4 seconds instead of 5 and also makes it tick for more. This trait can't be stacked to make it tick faster but could be stacked to increase the healing from Isera's Gift. When you don't expect to get trained and you don't need the Ursox Endurance trait you could use one Waking Dream trait and two Growth Tending traits to increase your healing at the cost of survivability. Every gear piece will have Intellect which is the main stat for all casters. After this the priority list looks like this. Haste, Mastery, Versatility, Critical Strike. Haste makes your hot stick faster and makes you do more healing. Faster ticking hots means more and faster healing, which is why it's Rested Druid's best stat. Mastery is a close second, since your healing is increased for every hot active on the target. 
When the target is fully hotted, you will do a lot more healing on that target, which is why mastery comes in second. Critical strike and versatility aren't very useful for druids, since critical strike won't help you to increase your healing. Druid's playstyle is putting healing over time effects on a target and keep that target topped instead of having burst healing like holy paladins for example. When looking at gear, you should aim to have haste and mastery on every gear piece, preferably more haste than mastery. For your enchants, you want to have enchant ring, pact of haste, which increases your haste by 37 on your rings. For your weapon enchant, we recommend getting enchant weapon quick navigation. Quick Navigation has a chance to increase your haste by 50 for 30 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. When it reaches 5 stacks, it will consume those stacks to increase your haste by 400 for 10 seconds. For trinket choices, there are two trinkets that really stand out from the rest. Revitalizing Voodoo Totem gives baseline intellect and has a hot on a 1.5 minute cooldown, which will count towards your mastery. Azurfus Sin's Plumage also has baseline intellect and can be used to increase your haste on a 1.5 minute cooldown. This trinket will increase the rate your hot stick at and works really well for rested druids. The last trinket is Dread Gladiator's Emblem, which also gives you baseline intellect. This trinket is perfect when you're expecting to get trained, since it can be used to increase your maximum health for 15 seconds on a 1.5 minute cooldown. Druid has multiple races that are good depending on the situation. For Alliance, Night Elf is still the best, giving you Shadow Melt to avoid CC or damage. Night Elves also have extra haste when playing at night from the passive ability Touch of a Loon. Worgen could be a good pick when you need extra mobility versus a certain comp, for example when facing a melee cleave that will train you. The racial ability is Dark Flight, which will increase your current movement speed by an additional 40% for 10 seconds on a 2 minute cooldown. For Horde, High Mountain Torrent is the best pick because of the passive damage reduction from Rogue Tenacity. Apart from that, they also have the ability Bull Rush on a 2 minute cooldown which can be used as an extra mobility spell. The better race depends on the situation and preference. Night Elf is better when you're not gonna get trained and High Mountain Torrent will be better when you expect to get trained. Rested Druid's playstyle remains the same and you will spend the majority of the game at the pillar trying to avoid damage and CC while keeping your team topped. Rested Druid's single target healing rotation consists of keeping a target topped with HOTS active instead of trying to catch up. Start with getting 2 rejuvenations up. And after this get your free life boon stacks up. If the target needs extra healing after this, you can use Regrowth, Wild Growth and Swiftment to try and stabilize them. Efflorescence can also be used when your team is stacking at the pillar. For healing multiple targets, you want to keep 2 rejuvenations on every target while having 3 stacks of life bloom on a target that's taking the most damage. Use Wild Growth if your team is under a lot of pressure and you have to stabilize them quickly. Remember that your life bloom stacks can be refreshed when the duration is 5 seconds or less to still proc the bloom effect from life bloom but to keep the free stacks active. To quickly top a target you will have to do some burst healing with cooldowns. Use Scenarian Ward when the target has all hots active to get the most out of Scenarian Ward from a mastery. If the target still requires healing you can use Swiftman to apply another hot with the growth tending trait. If multiple targets are dropping health you can choose to use Tranquility behind the pillar. Look for gear with haste and mastery on it, get a chance to have haste and pick your azurite trait depending on if you need survivability or extra healing. That's gonna be it for this guys, please leave a plus skill if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.